Hi, you may have had your dog blood allergy tested before or your cat blood allergy tested before because your vet advised you to uh, due to itchy skin um, or your, uh, your pet is scratching. So what exactly is blood allergy testing and what do we do with that? Today we're going to discuss just about that. So, blood allergy testing is usually offered to pets, dogs or cats, that are scratching, they are itchy, and uh, we suspect that there is a allergy involved. So usually when we test for um, the blood, uh, or test for allergies, we are, you can sort of roughly degrade, uh, sort of divide the groups into three different groups. Okay? There is the outdoor environmental allergens, or the indoor environmental allergens, and last but not least, food allergies. Okay, So the idea of blood testing is that we can test the blood to see what it's sensitive to for all the different uh, bits that are being tested. Okay, Let me explain. The reason behind doing that usually is twofold. One is that there is a potential intention of making an immunovaccination okay, or immunotherapy whereby if you know exactly what your pet is allergic to, you can get that component and uh, put it all into a vaccine to do immunotherapy whereby you inject the pet slowly over time to make your pet more resistant to that particular allergen. So that's what we call immunotherapy. Um, how successful that is, there are different reports cited anything from 60% to 80% success rate, which means that 60% um, or 80% of pets, when they have this immune vaccine, it actually helps them to stop being itchy. They are cured of the allergic skin issue by giving this immune vaccination, okay, immunotherapy. And you can only do that if you know exactly what component is, it goes into the vaccine. Okay, and that is what you vaccinate against uh, the, your pet for uh, to give the immunotherapy. And this uh, it's very unique for different pets because different pets have got different uh, allergies, different allergens. So, back, uh, so that's the first reason. The second reason sometimes is uh, people like to know, and um, some things that when we find out, there are actually things that we can do management uh, management uh, methods or procedures that we can do to reduce the uh, allergens. Okay, so I'm going to go through a few different examples. So the first one is let's talk about uh, indoor allergens. So indoor allergens, things that we uh, that uh, we sort of check against is usually things like storage mites, forage mites, um, house dust mites. Uh, flea allergic dermatitis, where the animal is allergic to the flea saliva itself. So when we find if our animal is uh, allergic to, or has been shown to have an allergy for all these sort of different components, there could be something that we can do. For example, if an animal has got flea allergic dermatitis and it's shown in the blood test, then we know that for this particular animal, to stop the itchiness, you cannot really achieve a low flea burden you must have a no flea burden because what it really means is that they're allergic to the flea saliva itself whereby a single bite can trigger off a reaction as though bitten by a thousand fleas. So we have to make sure that this pet has got no fleas by having very, very good flea control. Okay. Um, another example would be if our little friend here is allergic to storage mites, then sometimes it's not uncommon for owners to put dry dog food into a big tub and slowly scoop out a little bit on the daily intake from that. And when it goes all the way to the bottom, there could be a lot of little, little grains inside there, okay? And that is where that should be cleared properly, okay, before a fresh bag of food is put inside there. Or simply wiping the dog's face so that all the little dust from the uh, food is not stuck around the face, okay? That can potentially increase the chance of um, uh, your had been exposed to storage mites. So these are the specific things that we can do to improve the situation, but we only know how to do that because we have tested a dog for the allergy and found that the dog is allergic to that, or the pet is allergic to that, okay? Because this also goes for cats as well. Um, so that's for the indoor allergens. For the outdoor allergens, okay, that is a little bit useful or not useful. For example, if um, it comes out to be 
uh, the pet is allergic to a particular sort of grass that you know is growing in that particular field. And every time your dog goes into that field, or your cat goes into that field, they come back itchy. So it's quite simple. It's just, if possible, ignore the field, uh, sorry, avoid the field so you don't even go near the allergen in the first place. Sometimes it may not be that useful. For example, if it says that the um, your pet is allergic to, say, a birch tree that is just found outside your house, it's tricky unless you're saying that you're going to chop the tree down. There's not much you can do about it. It's one thing finding it out, and but you can't do anything about it. So that is where sometimes the knowledge can be interesting, but it may not be that useful in terms of solving the problem. Um, an option of that is if you're interested in doing the immuno vaccine, then that could be one good reason of why you do the blood test in the first place. So usually for external environmental, uh, outdoor environmental allergens, they look for different trees, they look for different leaves, uh, weeds, flowers, grasses, uh, mold, and all these sort of different um, variety. The challenge to that comes in, they're testing for things that they have known to cause problems. Uh, however, they cannot test everything that Mother Nature has to provide. For example, if your pet is allergic to a particular weed that is not in the panel, it wouldn't pick that up. And you can address everything in the panel, but not the particular weed, and the weed is still present over there, your pet may still remain itchy. So that itself may not, uh, that is the limitations of having a known panel of um, all the different allergens because not everything is in the panel. It's almost impossible. You're talking about Mother Nature. Millions, millions of different species of grass, weeds, and trees, and you know, uh, flowers, and pollen, and things like that. So that's a limitation, but that's also why we sort of uh, uh, do it, and those are the different advantages. The last one, food allergy testing. Okay, so there's a blood test for that, whereby they test whether there's an allergen against um, beef, chicken, turkey, so, uh, soya, wheat, and things like that. Okay. Uh, however, uh, my personal understanding and uh, from chatting to uh, different dermatologists, different specialists, um, and also doing my own research, the blood component of food testing is not as robust or as useful as uh, the rest of the different panels of the environmental allergens. So uh, for me personally, I don't really read too much into the food allergen um, results for, uh, for, for the blood testing. If I felt that an animal is having a food allergy, I will be advising a, I'll be suggesting a trial, uh, sort of trial therapy or a trial diet, uh, sort of a hypoallergenic diet to take out all the sort of allergens in the food or to try a completely no novel protein. But that is for a whole different discussion. It's just that I don't rate personally um, blood tests for food uh, that much because of the conflicting evidence we're getting, whereby it well may not show too much on the blood test, but the animal is actually allergic to that particular food. It's just the, the, the results don't correlate too much in my experience to uh, real life. Uh, so that is um, my sort of a little uh, take on uh, allergy blood testing. Comment below if your pet has had an allergy blood test and whether it helped you or not. I look forward to seeing the next event. This is Amity.